Hello everyone and welcome to my nerdy little corner of the internet. This is not working out. Today we are talking about the first set of spoilers for the Brothers War for Wizards of the Coast Magic the Gathering. You were my brother! Mishra. Uh, keep in mind that these are meant the point of view of a limited player, so I'm not going to be talking about standard or modern or commander for these cards. I'm just going to be focusing on draft and sealed. Now that that's taken care of, let's look at the spoilers for Brothers War, starting with the new mechanics of the set. The first new mechanic is Prototype, and we can see that on Phyrexian Flesh Gorger. If you play the card for its prototype cost, it becomes the cost, color, and power, and toughness designated by the cost and the other abilities. So for the Flesh Gorger, you can either pay 7 for a 7-5 seven, colorless artifact creature with lifelink, menace, and ward, or you can pay 1 black black for a 3-3 three, three black artifact creature with the same ability. This is really cool. It's like a reverse version of Kicker, where instead of paying extra to get bonus stuff, you're willing to pay a little bit less for a smaller body, which is really cool. The second new mechanic that we're having is called Power Stones. We saw Power Stones with Karn in Dominaria United, but we weren't quite impressed with those in that set, but they look to be much more prevalent in Brothers War. Power Stones are artifact tokens and they tap for a colorless mana, but that mana cannot be used for non-artifact spells. So you can use them to cast your artifacts, you can use them to activate abilities, you can use them to pay extra costs, So, such as ward. If you're targeting a creature that has ward 2, you can use 2 of the power stone mana in order to pay for that ward cost. I think power stones are going to be really good to look at in this set, because if Prototype tells us that there's going to be big expensive artifacts, Power Stones are going to let us ramp into those very quickly. And I think that's going to be a big archetype for this, especially in the non-green color pairs. The brothers in this Brothers War are Urza and Mishra. And this set is kind of spanning between three eras of their lives. So they're going to have a young Urza and Mishra card, a kind of middle-aged card for each, and then also a later stage of their life, their finale. I like these I like these younger cards here. They're very good on commons. They synergize together, which is really cool. So you can play blue red looks to be maybe some sort of discard artifacts deck, which would be interesting. However, if you look at the next stage of their lives with the Prince of Krug Urza and Mishra Tamer of Makfala. You see that Urza and Mishra kind of deviate from each other, but like the two Urza cards actually still synergize pretty well together, and so do the two Mishras. I think these Urza and Mishra cards are going to be really good in Limited, just because they have really strong abilities. Urza, Prince of Krug having Artifact Creature Double Lord, and Mishra giving everything Ward Sacrifice a permanent, which is just an automatic two-for-one. Everything is a two-for-one now. It is really powerful. Now, the later parts of their lives, with Urza Lord Protector and Mishra claimed by Gix, they are reintroducing the meld mechanic, which is you have two cards that meld together, and there's some sort of trigger that happens. So with Urza, you need both Urza and the Might Stone and Weak Stone and pay a cost, and then they flip over and turn into Urza Planeswalker. Mishra and the Phyrexian Dragon Engine also do the same thing. And then we also have a mono green one for Titania, or Titania, however you want to pronounce that. I feel these cards are going to have a, the same thing that we did in Eldritch Moon where it was really difficult to get in draft, especially since these were especially since these are rares and mythics. It's going to be basically impossible to draft. And then if you happen to open these in your sealed pool, you're going to feel really lucky and you're just going to build around those. The rest of the pain lands that we're missing from Dominaria United are being printed here in Brothers War. And unfortunately, that's another whiff in the rare spot because no one really wants to open up a pain land in the draft or their sealed pool. And it's kind of just a feel bad. 
Another returning mechanic is Unearth, which is whenever this creature is in your graveyard as a sorcery, you can pay its Unearth cost to return it to the battlefield with haste. Exile it during your next upkeep or if it would leave the battlefield. So cards here like Ashnod's Harvester and Scrapwork Cohort, they have the Unearth ability. Unearth is really fun and limited. It lets you get that extra attack in. If the card has an Enter the Battlefield ability, you get that Enter the Battlefield ability twice. Unearth is a good, fun, limited mechanic, and it adds value. We also have everyone's favorite Planeswalker, Teferi! He's back! Yay! Five cost walker that gets loyalty whenever you draw a card. He then draws cards, and then he makes a creature that gets bigger whenever you draw cards. Do you wonder what he's doing? Is he gathering information from the past? And it's represented by drawing cards. Can you tell that this was designed during the fire era? Do you realize how powerful this thing is? Also, when the heck did blue become like a color for vigilance? I I don't get it. I mean, we had haunting figment last last set, but like I think these are the only blue card, mono blue cards with vigilance, and it just it confuses me a little bit. Urkel looks to be a pretty decent rare, especially with the essential card fixing. And I misread it at the very beginning. I thought it was whenever you cast, but no, it's at your end step. So you get these cards at the end of your turn, which is not as great, but it's still card fixing and it gets you through your deck and you're going to be able to find your non-creature, you're going to find your non-creature rares and mythics much quicker, which sometimes is all you need within a game of limited. Now this, this man, this Gix is terrifying for commander but we're not talking about commander so he's kind of okay here in limited a three for three for three is a really good body and it lets you draw cards on hitting your opponent that's kind of a win more ability but sometimes you just need to get ahead in cards and then give up some of your life for that and you're fine with that one life for a card for doing things that you're going to be doing in the game anyway. That's okay. Seven cost ability. I don't think you're going to be using that often in limited. There really isn't too much of a reason to steal cards from your opponent's deck. At the same time, if you can discard five cards and hit five like really good spells for free, then that'd be pretty nice. Also... I don't think this is going to be a turn 7 thing. Remember, we have power stones in this. So every activated ability is going to be kind of cheaper if you're playing power stones in your deck. Sadly, this one's made for commander, and it's blatantly obvious. And that's another rare that isn't really good for this set in limited. Felden Ronum, Excavator, looks pretty decent for a red aggro deck. You can put him down on turn two and you have him swinging in. He's super aggressive, can't block, which is fine. And whenever he's traded or he's dealt any amount of damage, he replaces himself with a spell. That's a pretty good card and it's worth the rare. It's a good, it's a good limited rare. Oh my goodness, they're reprinting Monastery Swiss Spear. This was my favorite card when it was printed in Tarkir, and this was actually one of the key cards in one of the first decks I've ever built. So I'm getting my nostalgic kick from this card, and I am going to pick it almost every time I see it, because I love it so much, and it was good in Limited, and I think it's going to be good in this one too, to get under those big ramping decks. Oh look, another land in the rare slot. Reprinted from uh, War of the Spark. It wasn't good there. It's definitely not going to be good here in a set that's going to have expensive cards. I like the abilities and the mechanics that they shown are going to be in the set. I'm not too happy about the rares and mythics that they showed. But they typically leave the limited focused stuff later on in the spoiler season. So we'll see what happens there. I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And I hope you have a great day. Goodbye.